Well, good day. It is June 18th, 2015, and I hope everyone is having a great week so far. Uh, today, we'll be talking about swing trading with a daytime job. Now, I did do a pretty extensive video about how to trade stocks and invest while you work the nine to five. So uh, if you go to YouTube and you search for it, um, you can see that this is the video right here and uh, it pulls up. So if you're looking for the exact link or the URL, that is it right there. That's what it looks like. Uh, I believe you can even um, type it in and search for it over there on uh, Google and it should come up right there if you search for uh, those exact keywords. So uh, that's what it looks like. We haven't done it or talked about it in a while, but I've been getting more and more questions about swing trading um, when you have a daytime job. And I want to tackle this uh, subject in a little bit more detail or maybe in a little bit of a different way um, about getting into the trade. And, you know, somebody that's working a daytime job oftentimes feels like they're missing the trades and feels like the opportunities that are presented uh, sometimes get uh, moved away or passed by. So in this video, I want to approach swing trading specifically and how you can trade stocks on a swing trading basis even if you have a daytime job. So uh, that's what we'll be talking about. Now before we get there, I just want to let you know we're getting the final proof for the shorting book. So that should be coming soon uh, once I approve it. Probably, you know, early July should be out there and ready for the launch. Um, and also, I just actually finished filming the um, uh, building your own stock trading computer or workstation. Uh, now, for me personally, I enjoy uh, the technical stuff. I enjoy the technology aspect of building and creating a computer. Just like, you know, I also enjoy cooking. I enjoy yoga, these kinds of things. Um, you know, we all have different hobbies that we enjoy. And that's just one of my things that I, I also think it's uh, very good for risk management. So if something happens, you're able to diagnose it um, on the fly. So uh, we will have a video out for that absolutely free and um, it's going to be in depth so I'll cover more about part picking part choosing um, we won't go in detail about building the computer itself and putting the parts together because there's tons of people that already do that uh, but I'll just go in detail about choosing the parts so already it's it's quite a lengthy and in-depth video so uh, a lot of knowledge in there and maybe it'll give you some insight for trading um, on your own or tr building a trading workstation or even just purchasing a trading workstation. Um, of course, you can just trade off of your smartphone or basic laptop, but if you want something a little more powerful, this video should give you some insight. All right, with that in mind, let's uh, kind of get started and let's take a look at the market. Let's see where it's at um, and let's talk about some stocks and then we'll talk about um, the um, swing trading uh, if you have a daytime job. So uh, to get things started, we're going to be talking about the S&P 500 first. So here, if we look at the S&P, we're uh, pretty much where we were before. I mean, uh, it's just isolating and really on the mid-range picture, we're just bouncing up and down for the time being. And the same thing here, you know, we'll drop a bit and then we'll go ahead and they'll bring it back up. And uh, it's really not that exciting. So really, you're looking at specific stocks and what specific stocks are doing. It's a stock picker's market at the time. Um, we're over leveraged in terms of a lot of people there's not enough fear in the market so they constantly keep uh buying more in and uh you know raising those prices and and they pop higher on a light volume and by light i'm talking about here uh the light volume relative to overall what's been happening so if we look at the weekly volume um, you know, relative to some of the other peaks in the past. I mean, look at it here on the Dow Jones 355 versus in 2009 or even 2010, there was a lot more volume. S&P as well. Um, you know, just looking at the volume, how it's been going, uh, that's a contraction. 
a contraction of volume usually can bring disaster. So you always want to be careful, um, understand where it is, where's the risk to reward. And just because the markets are there, that doesn't mean you can't trade it. You're just looking for the right stocks and the right opportunities. So let's talk about a few of the big names and the big big boy names. We're not going to talk, um, you know, 20, 30 stocks, but, you know, we'll talk about a five, five, six, seven different stocks and uh, give you some insight here. So we'll start with Apple just because it's a fairly uh, large stock and uh, one that a lot of people uh, people trade over here. Now, I talked about this one um, a while back, uh, multiple times actually, where, um, let me see here, there's the arrow. Where uh, we rejected these higher prices at these points right here. So at every single one of these opportunities, even though the earnings came out right here, uh, it still rejected higher prices. We pushed a little higher, and then the stock rejected it. Okay, so that means when we got back up to uh, right around here, again, you had a shorting opportunity and that allowed you to do a little run for about five, five points, uh, five and a half points if you caught it. Now we are moving a little bit up again, uh, but you know, you're trading in this range. If you're looking to get into that stock, uh, I wouldn't get into that stock until it breaks this level right here or the highs over here. So again, we're we're moving up a little bit right now uh, today on 50 cents, but it's nothing really exciting um, in terms of the stock is concerned. So uh, you're watching for these breaks in these patterns and some great company such as um, Amazon had a nice consolidation pattern. So if we look at uh, this consolidation pattern right here today, it moved $11. And uh, that's a serious move. That's a pretty solid move. And uh, it's picking up on volume, picking up on uh, some steam here. And that's really what we want to see um, when it comes to, um, you know, a stock breaking. So we have the volume picking up. We have the stock moving good wide price spread. Uh, what we do want to see is um, sometimes we want to see it now clear this level for a potential long. You should also be careful of these gaps. So gaps right here do tend to suck the stock in. So you would always use this line right here as a uh, line of support or right below that as a stop because chances are if it breaks that level uh, then you might be able to see that stock to come down to that line or to fill that gap so you're always paying close attention of where the stock is what's its potential and what's its weakness and this is what allows you to make your decisions for the future it allows you to see what the opportunities are the more things in your favor the higher your probability. The less things in your favor, uh, you know, the weaker your probability and the less chance of success. So if I have all these things in alignment, uh, then I'm able to get into uh, the trade with more shares, with uh, higher leverage positions. And when more things are in my favor, then that's when you use leverage options and so many other things, um, allowing you to make even more money from the trade, but you're looking for these prime opportunities uh, when you're making your uh, trading decisions. All right, the next stock I want to cover is CMG. We talked about this stock for a while in the past, and it's just one I watch because it's it's a good one to trade. It moves quickly. Uh, if we take it out to the weekly, this was the pattern I was watching. It broke um, right here at this level nice heavy huge volume on earnings right there that's your short entry point and week after week it's been heading lower now if you look at it on the daily the daily can play some tricks on you because you do have um a few um a few little uh spikes over here that you know start to come come up you know like this little range this spike here have a few little bounces here and that can get scary but you know if you look at the overall the weekly you can see that they've all been red on the longer term picture 
the initial projection over the last, let's see how many weeks is this, uh, 1.8 months, um, you know, we got 36 points to the short side. And if you've been with me for those last two months, you know I've talked about this. If you haven't, go ahead on the tradersfly.com website, go to the rapid recaps, and you can see some of those videos where we actually talk about this stock uh, right in this range where we looked at this stock and when it broke here, this was that heavy volume coming into the stock. The stock came back up to retest this line, rejected it. Stock came back and the momentum and the energy pushes that stock lower. Again, I talk about this energy. It applies to life. It applies to a lot of things in the world around you. Uh, it applies to your health. It applies to your finances. It applies to social aspects that you deal with on a friendship basis. If your friend is constantly late, chances are they will be late to your lunch meeting. If you're um, always the type of person that doesn't like to admit your faults, then chances are that's going to happen the same thing. One of the things that I always enjoyed about studying business and psychology is, uh, you know, if you take your five closest friends, take your five closest friends um, and average those people together, the end result actually becomes you. So really, if you take a look at it, one friend might be into, let's say, business things, another friend might be into exercise, another friend may be into photography, and another friend might be into, uh, you know, decor or decorating their house. So chances are you're probably into those things as well because, you know, you are accumulation of all those friends and an average of all those people that you associate with. So if you really want to get better, start associating with like-minded people that you want to become like or become better. So with this in mind, the same thing happens in stocks. You know, this looking at the chart is really all about crowd behavior. It's people's psychology. It's about what people will do. And that's why some of the things that the sayings go with, the phrases, the rhythms, uh, the rhymes, um, all these little things, you know, um, that we have in the stock market, they're there for a reason. And the reason for that is because human behavior changes very slowly. It's oftentimes very predictable. As I like to say, if you um, had something for breakfast today, chances are you probably had that same thing for breakfast yesterday or at least the day before or at least sometime this week. Um, you know, we typically repeat these patterns. We typically wake up at the same time. We typically go to bed at very similar hours and so forth. So you're, you're, um, you're not always unpredictable. A lot of things are just systematic and conditioned uh, for us, the programming. And uh, with the stock market, the same thing is true. Once you learn to read and spot some of these things in charts like Apple, you can see that we repeat these concepts. Here's the second time around. Okay, so the swing point that we had back here, it repeats right here or giving you a third opportunity right there. So these things repeat time and time again until they don't. And once they don't, then it allows you to make new decisions because things are now changing and evolving. Just like a human being, they eventually evolve, get better, progress, build a nest egg, you know, upgrade their uh, car, upgrade their lifestyle. The same thing with stocks. They upgrade, they get better. Uh, but, you know, there's periods of times where they're in that rhythm, in that rhythm, in that system until things change. So let's take a look at uh, another couple of stocks. Uh, here we have TRIP. Looking at this long word consolidation pattern, here it is. And uh, then we go ahead and we do a break right here. This was your entry point. If you're not in it now, uh, I would be patient and wait for a potential pullback. It's a little bit farly, far, far extended. Um, another potential could be to wait for the break right there. Okay, so uh, just something to watch for. Uh, then we also have ISLE. I believe we talked about this one last week. If not, it was probably in the critical charts. Uh, so here was the consolidation pattern for some period of time. Build momentum, building momentum. As stock broke. Now it's selling off off the highs. So you always want to make sure you take profits into strength for this reason. 
So for this reason, I wouldn't be entering that stock right now. Uh, but again, your entry point would have been right around this region, allowing you to capture that run, take some profits either on that first bar uh, that's red, um, or you could have even taken it a few days later. Totally up to you. You know, the stock was starting to pause and then you could have entered it again or added to the position as it powered higher. Now it's pulling back. So definitely you want to make sure you have taken some of your profits. ADMS. I don't like trading the pharmaceuticals too often uh, just because they whip you around very quickly. If you take a look at the weekly here, the stock broke out very nicely and very well on fairly good volume. Um, you know, this one also trades lightly. So again, something to be careful of uh, with those pharmaceutical companies uh, because sometimes they're a little bit uh, erratic or, you know, they just don't move as smoothly with lighter volume. So always be very cautious when trading uh, biotechs, pharmaceuticals, although if you catch the breaks, they can be really profitable. So looking at this one, you know, if you were watching the highs here, you can see that this one right there was starting to break right there and you could have entered it on the second day and would have been a superior run for you right there, $5 in just a handful of days. It's uh, quite remarkable and percentage wise, 20% 20%. So a uh, good run there, but always be peeling into strength with these biotechs or any stock for that matter. Uh, let's talk about a couple more RDUS. So here again, uh, consolidation pattern, consolidation here, uh, broke out first day with a little bit of volume picking up right there. And then uh, second day follow through again, huge. We had a little sell off off the highs, which uh, could be some trouble or profit taking, but always be mindful of the gap. Um, you know, sometimes when the stock is overextended, it likes to pull back and retest things. But uh, nevertheless, this one uh, broke out fairly well here. Uh, CM, CM. Also, we talked about this one also on the critical charts or the rapid recap uh, a week or two ago. So here, look at this stock right there building. We had heavy volume right here coming up. Uh, nice spike coming up right there. And uh, if we take this out to the daily, so here's the daily. You can see all that volume contracting and then building and exploding. So again, if you want to do the ABCD pattern, here we have our A to B, B to C, C to D right there. And now again, we're building, we're building right here on this uh, support and resistance line. So, uh, you know, once it broke right here, this was your real entry point, And that's what, where we were talking about it, uh, using support right here, support here, support here. And now it's building again, wait for a clearing of, of this line right here. If you want to add to that position, um, on volume, of course. So, uh, watch those closely and, uh, wait for that break. All right, so uh, I do want to talk about a couple of things here for your um, for your job. If you're trying to swing trade, but you have a job, let me just get into some insight, and I'll use an example from um, some of the examples I've used in the past. We'll just do uh, Duke Energy. I had a question about this one. How do you really you know trade or get into this Duke Energy? Uh, stock if you have a daytime job. Well, the thing is, is you should be doing your homework the night before, before you get into the trade. And if we're looking at the overall picture of this stock, if we're looking at the overall trend, and if you study the courses I have, such as the technical analysis course, or even the green course, um, both of those courses cover the ABCD pattern. So here we have A to B, B to C, and C to D. So that's really the pattern. I won't go in detail about it here too much because that could be an hour on its own. Uh, but really, when you're looking at this pattern, as you're doing your homework, let's just say we're in this time frame. So here we have our A to B, and now we're retracing to the upside on lighter or contracting volume. Now I start noticing um, a volume picking up right here, and I start noticing the clearing of this um, of this support line right there. Now, if I wanted to really be precise, I could have, I could get right here and just get super precise on it. So I can see it's pushing against it, but it's increasing in volume. So I'm waiting for it to clear 
this level. Now, what I could do is I could already start nibbling some shares short. So by nibbling, I mean lightly. And uh, you can start nibbling some shares short here, but personally, I would wait for it to clear. So the next couple of days, you can see it hasn't cleared it yet. It's still holding up on that trend line. But then after a day or two, it finally broke right here. This was on 5-5-2015. Very interesting and ironic. So here again, you can see that we went up on lighter volume, but we broke on heavier volume. Okay, so we broke downward. So if you set a little um, order trigger right here to short the stock at, let's say, 76.63, because you know the bigger picture, you know the bigger picture that stock was down, retraced, you know that you're all the way here, which your potential should be down here, then you have time to get into that stock. So you could have put an order right around this 7675 level the night before or even in those few um, regions or areas. So if we take a look at, let's say here, you could have put an order during these few days, you could have put an order in right at this price level, right around there, waiting for it to clear, okay, because you're expecting this. Now, the next few days, we had upticks. So even if you didn't get filled there, you could adjust your limit orders or whatever they are and place a few, you know the short order triggers right around this area or this region. Again, playing around in there. That's if you didn't get filled. If you got filled, then you would have been fine. You would have been riding in that stock. Okay, so the next day what happens? We come back and we retest that previous uh, trend line. This is the trend line, supporting trend line that we broke right here. This is called an internal trend line resistance. So we, we came back to test that and we rejected it. So what happened? We opened up right here at this level. We got to these highs and we closed over here. Okay, so that means weakness. We popped higher, we closed lower, right? So next few days or next couple days right here, what happens? We continue to sell off the stock. But you got to remember, you're already short either here. You might be short here. You might be short here. You might be short here. Even if you got in at the worst time, let's say you got in late at this price level, which is the lowest out of those four days to short the stock, Okay, that's the that's the worst day out of those four days. Okay, if you got in short there, you still would be ahead. Basically, here's our trend line right there, and you can see that we continued lower right here. And here's the increase in that bearish red volume. Okay, so here, here, okay, you see it's building, building cause. And that stock, as we look at it, Basically, we're saying that if we got into this stock at a horrible time, and that horrible time was right around this level, okay, let's say even we got in late five days later, a week later, right here, you still would have been, let's just draw the line right here to this level, uh, $2.70 profitable to the short side, okay? So that's if you got in late. Choosing the right stocks at the right time and allowing them to run, you're still up two dollars and seventy cents to three dollars. Okay, and that's even. Let's just say the stock is now bouncing and it's right here. You're still up a buck profitable, and that's if you got in late and you're exiting late. So that's if you're making a horrible trade um, entry and exit, but you're choosing the right stock then you're still profitable. Imagine that. So learning to read the charts properly is very critical and very important, as you can see by this. And I mean, if you had a thousand shares short, you know, just making a buck, and that's if you're a horrible, you know, entry and exit person, just making a buck right there, that's an extra thousand dollars. Uh, but if you did a good entry and exit, you know, right around here, you're, you're up about three to four dollars. So thousand shares, four thousand bucks, 10,000 shares, 40,000 bucks. So, you know, that gives you a lot of room to play. And you can do this the same thing in Netflix, um, you know, to the upside. Um, you're looking for potentials, potentials. So if I'm looking at the weekly, I see this consolidation pattern. 
Okay, so I'm noticing these highs right here. You could do it where the highs are rejecting. You could do it where it's breaking. So let's just take it to the upside. If you, uh, let's just say you miss this move right here. You don't want to chase it. You know, that stock really exploded. But we know that there was a lot of volume. There was a lot of volume building right here over this time period. There's a lot of volume building. So if we consolidate right there at this level, you had all this time to get into the stock long. You had 22 days where you could have every night adjusted your limit position to get into that stock, you know, and you would have just used the lows right here as your stop, okay? So if the stock would have broke this level right there, you would have exited the position for safety reasons and risk management. Now, when it broke right here, you know it continued higher and, of course, higher volume, right? Same thing here at this level, okay? So even if you got into this stock and trade late, let's say you got in right here or even right here, and the stock, where is it now, okay? You're still up $41 in, in 30 days choosing the right stocks, but you had 22 days to get in. 22 days to get in. So it's not as important to get into the stocks at the exact breaking point, although I think it is better if you get in at the right time um, and exit at the right time. That does help. Uh, but if you have a daytime job, I know sometimes it's not perfect, but you can't stress the fact that you have to get in 10 cents, 20 cents lower because you have to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture we're looking at is a longer term gain. We're looking for runs that are a month, two months, four months, six months. You know, that's what we're looking for. And as the stock powers higher, you sell some shares into strength. So in this case, the stock continues to power higher for uh, multiple months now. And you had, you know, multiple weeks to get into that stock, multiple opportunities. So it's not as critical. Uh, now, there are times where, where uh, you get into the stock and uh, sometimes you get into the stock and sometimes you do want to get it initially right away on the break. So if it breaks and it continues moving in two days very quickly and you miss the opportunity, uh, then you definitely don't want to chase it. So here in this example, again, to the short side, um, you know, you can do the same concept right here. The first day, first day break right here. And then the second day break already, I feel like it's a little bit past it. So you could still nibble some shares short, but maybe you wouldn't trade fully short as you would if you got in up here. So uh, the same thing here, you had one, two, three days to get into the short side. There was your volume. So even if you got in late, you still had a good run of four or five dollars to the downside. So here, even if you got in late and you know got out early, that's still a six dollar run. And our pattern, of course, is A, A to B, B to C, C to D. Or if you draw it another way, again, we got A to B, B to C, C to D. Okay, so these patterns typically repeat, and again, it's just natural human behavior. All right, I hope you got some insight from this. Uh, don't stress too much about getting in at the exact precise moment if you have a daytime job. Just trade a little bit lighter and set a position to get into that stock within that one or two day breaking period. But you need to know chart patterns if you're trying to swing trade and you have a daytime job. If you don't know chart patterns and you're not equipped with the right education, it's going to be a little more difficult because you don't know what to look for. Then you're going to be you know, throwing darts uh, blindly. It's going to be very tough um, to know what's going on and what's happening or even understand things. So before you do that, you really need to know and understand what you're watching for. And then you can go ahead and make the trades. Uh, but you can do it and you can um, set the positions and set the limits in place um, if you're gone for the day. And that is something that I may even do from time to time. Uh, just because you know and understand the pattern, you know and understand the behavior, and it typically repeats time and time again. So in either case, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for joining me. Hope you have a great week ahead of you. Um, you know, enjoy your time, enjoy your time with your family. We'll be heading to Chicago for a little break here soon and then also to Canada. So uh, probably will be seeing some of you uh, over those breaks. And uh, But if not, 
Enjoy your time. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, I will see you next week. Thanks again.